Did you hear about a new feature that was released? The ability to embed dashboards into your applications. That's right, a dashboard. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. What's up guys, Adam Saxon, AKA Guy in a Cube. And today we're gonna to take a look at how to actually embed a dashboard into your application. Before you had the ability to embed reports or tiles through the APIs and through other mechanisms like publish to web. But today we're gonna to look at, you can actually embed a, an, an entire dashboard into your application. We're gonna walk through the sample and I'm gonna give you some tools that can help you from a developer standpoint to get you up and running quickly. So let's start off and go take a look at where the sample is and how you can get it. So we're looking at GitHub. There is a GitHub repo called Power BI Developer Samples. If you're not familiar with GitHub, you can actually install GitHub locally on your machine and you can pull the files from these repos locally. If you don't wanna have anything to do with Git itself, you just want the project files themselves, you can just go to clone or download and select download zip. That'll just package the entire Git repo up in a zip file, bring that locally, and then you'll have those project files to work with. So within the project itself, you'll see a folder there called powerbi.com integrate. Inside of there, you'll see integrate dashboard web app. And inside of that is the actual application itself. And so I've got this local and we can see I've got Power BI developer samples. I've got powerbi.com integrate and then integrate dashboard web app. And you'll see all of this in there. You're going to see a solution file. This is for visual studio 2015. You can go ahead and double click on that and that will open up the project inside of Visual Studio if you have that. There are other ways to edit files and to compile these. You can use VS Code. Uh, you can actually just use the .NET compiler and Notepad. For the examples in this video, I'm gonna be using Visual Studio. Okay, so our project's open. One thing we have to do right off the bat is we need to configure our web config with a client ID and a secret. The way you do that is you have to register your application with your tenant. This actually happens inside of Azure Active Directory. We've got a web page you can go to that will take care of this for you, make it a little easier so you don't have to worry about Azure Active Directory itself. It'll do it under the hoods for you. Go here, you can go to dev.powerbi.com slash apps and that will bring you to this page. First thing we have to do is sign in with our account. Okay, once we're signed in, you'll see your name. Hopefully it's you. And then at this point, we can give some information about it. So let's call it a, we're gonna to wanna to make sure app type is server side web app. We're gonna give it a redirect URL. So for this case, I'm just gonna do localhost port 13526. So that's the default URL for our application if we're running it local. And then we'll do it again. Then you need to select the permissions that the application will have. So you wanna select the minimal amount of permissions that you can do. So for example, if you're not gonna be working with groups in your application, don't select read all groups. In this case, we're only working with dashboards, so I'm just gonna say read all dashboards. And then we can go ahead and say register app. Once that's done, you'll see a client ID and a client secret. You're gonna to wanna to copy those and we're gonna take them to our web config in the application. So let's switch over to our app. It's gonna be in the web config. And down below, you're gonna see client ID and client secret. You can go ahead and just paste those in there. And then you're done with the web config. The thing to note here is you're gonna see the AD authority URI and the Power BI API. These are uh, default items uh, for our API usage uh, for Azure Active Directory and for Power BI. So these are just root URLs. We have them as settings so that we can reference them later in the application. So let's close that. We're gonna start with our default ASPX page. And in here, let's go ahead and run it so you can see. So the application looks like this. You're gonna have three steps. First, you're gonna sign in, then you're gonna get a list of the dashboards. That uses the Power BI REST API. And then we're gonna actually embed the dashboard based on one of those URLs for a dashboard. That's actually gonna use the JavaScript API to do that. So going back to our application, let's step through that. The first thing we have is we see our sign-in. This is actually done in the code behind page. So let's go to that. And we can see our sign in button underscore click event or method to handle the event. And in here, we've got a parameter collection which will have our client ID inside of it. And 
it will have our redirect URL and some other items. This gets bundled up and we're gonna add that to the query string. At that point, we're gonna actually redirect to that Azure Active Directory Authority URI. And so we're basically gonna be signing in with these items to Azure Active Directory, and it's gonna give us back an authorization result. And what'll happen is when it redirects back to our application, we'll see in the page load that we get that auth authentication result. We cast that, this, it's in a session object. And so we're gonna cast that as authentication result that's based on the Azure Active Directory objects. And then below, you'll see that we stuff the displayable ID into user label. So that's your uh, email address or your UPN. And then we're going to stuff the access token into the text box as well. So this access token is actually what we're going to use to call into the Power BI API. So that tells us that we've authenticated. Okay, back to the default page. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our list of dashboards. There's just a button here. It's going to call this get dashboard buttons underscore click. Let's go back to our code behind. In here, like I said, this is using the Power BI REST APIs. So in here, we're gonna call our base URI, which is the API for the Power BI APIs. And we're gonna affix a item underneath it. So it's gonna be dashboards. And then we're gonna do a get on dashboards itself. So that's gonna get us a list of those items. And we're gonna stuff our access token into the authorization header. Once that's done, we're gonna get a response back. This response is gonna be in JSON format. And what we've done is we have some classes down below which match the structure of what that JSON is gonna look like. And we're gonna go through and just populate those classes based on the JSON itself. We're using the Newton soft JSON stuff. So we're doing JSON convert and pumping that into a class that we have. And then we're just gonna list that out in the grid. From a REST API perspective, one resource that's gonna be really helpful for you is this Power BI API ARI. And so this lists out all of the functions that you can call from a REST API perspective. It'll give you some code examples of what these look like. So if we look at dashboards, so we can go to list all dashboards, it's gonna give us some code examples. By default, it's gonna list it in Java. We can say JavaScript, we can do this in C Sharp. Um, so it'll give you a bunch of different code examples based on what you're trying to do. The other thing you can do, uh, well, it'll also give you the body response that'll come back from a JSON perspective. The other thing you can do is just try it. So you can sign in to Power BI and actually run these commands and see the responses back and what the JSON is actually gonna look like. So that's pretty cool. And you can do this for all items. So this is a very handy tool if you're not sure like what the response is gonna be or, or what the request should look like. You can absolutely go to this uh, API area and use that to give it a try and get some examples. And I will have links to this, all of the tools, the Git repos, check that out in the description below and you will see all of those links. Okay, so let's go back to our app. So let's go ahead and sign in and then we can see what this get dashboards does. So, okay, we're signed in already and then we'll do get dashboards and we see our list of dashboards that came back. So this was in that JSON response that came back from the REST API call. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is embed a dashboard. So this, as I mentioned before, is using JavaScript. And so if we go back to our default ASPX, we can see a couple things here. First, we have the text box, which we're gonna input the embed URL into that text box. And that's what we're gonna pass for the JavaScript commands. And then we've got a button. So the B embed dashboard action. And then we have our div, which is a dashboard container. So that's what we're gonna stuff the dashboard into. So to look at the app, this resides in SiteMaster, and we'll see a couple things here. So for the window on load, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go find that button, and we're going to attach an event to it, which we'll call this update embed dashboard method that we've defined in JavaScript. The other thing we're gonna do is any server-side posts that happen, we are going to get the access token from the text box, and then we are going to get the that access token and then call update embed dashboards along with it. So within update embed dashboard, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get that embed URL from the text box. If it's empty, we're just gonna return out. We're not gonna do anything. The next thing we're gonna do is get the access token from the access token text box that's on the form. Then we're gonna do some config information that's used for the JavaScript pieces. So this is necessary to call the JavaScript itself. This defines what we're actually gonna be calling. So in this case, we're calling a dashboard. 
we're passing in the access token and we're passing in the embed URL for that dashboard. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get that div, which is the dashboard container. And then we're gonna actually call powerbi.embed. And this is where the magic happens. So we're gonna pass in the reference to the div container and we're gonna pass in the config, which has the embed URL inside of it. And then it will go through and do what we need to do. So let's go back to our app. We'll go ahead and grab the embed URL and we'll say embed dash dashboard. And then you can see our dashboard itself. So this is the dashboard inside of our application. You'll also see this log view down below. And what happens is, is that if I click on a tile, it's gonna actually pump out some text here on the bottom. This is something that's happening in the code in the JavaScript. So let's go ahead and look at how that's being done. Go back to our code. Down below, you'll see here that the we are actually hooking into events that happen within the embed item so in this case it's the dashboard on and we are hooking into the tile clicked and the error events and so whenever a tile is clicked we get a json response back which has some information from your code in your application you can handle that so maybe you want to audit it and then maybe you want to redirect the user to whatever that URL is that's inside of the tile clicked event. And the other piece of this is an error. So if an error occurs, we want to do something with that. Maybe we want to log it and then maybe we want to format this in a friendly way to the end user to let them know that something bad happened. And so these are ways that you can hook into events from a JavaScript API perspective. And so that's how we get this text down below. And you'll see that it's got the report embed URL. We could take that report embed URL and then redirect or re-embed the report into another page. We can pass that in as a parameter. Okay, so another tool that's available for you from a JavaScript API perspective is this report embed sample. This sample is specific to Power BI embedded, but you can take the JavaScript and use that against the actual Power BI SaaS service. And so you can at least use this as a sample to see what that code should look like. So in this case, we can just say embed sample report, and then you'll see how to load that. And you'll see similar things here. So you'll see the config that we had, and then you'll see Power BI embed. So it's similar things to what we were doing in the dashboard example. The magic here is on the interact tab. So all the report operations here from a JavaScript perspective, you can do. So we can set pages for reports. We can get, uh, we can update settings, we can go full screen, we can exit full screen, all of these things. And you'll see code for each one of these, setting filters on reports. And so if you need examples of how to do this from a JavaScript perspective, this is a great way to do it. And then also we can see what those event listeners are, as well as page operations instead of report operations. So this sample is actually part of the JavaScript Git repo. And so that's the Microsoft Power BI JavaScript repo itself. And in here, you will see all the code and the demos. And if you scroll down, you'll see other items on like how to install it. The other thing you can do is go to wiki and the JavaScript and you'll see examples for how to use all this stuff. So for example, for handling events, you can go there and see examples of how to do all of this. Okay. I know we went through that very quickly. Hopefully it was helpful to you. If any questions, be sure to leave that down in the comments below and let me know. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If it's your first time here, be sure to click subscribe for more great content. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.